I had a lot of fun creating Vicky Vega, a custom model for GPT that was able to create Vega light um, code for Denep. Um, so that made me think, can I create something similar for DAX? So let's have a look what Dave DAX can do for us. So here I have the normal GPT model built me a table. So this table is just a uh, simple table. It only has four columns. It has project name, start date, project manager, and type of project. And it was auto created based on the prompts that I gave it. So I told it to create 30 projects, uh, IT related, hypothetical, and with a date range between the 2020 and 2024. So that is what I um, have as a starting table. Now what I've done is I've added that to a Power BI model. So I copied the table and I moved this to Power BI and here you see that table in Power BI. Very simple, easy table. One of the things that I see happening a lot with people doing in DAX is creating a calendar table. Now let's go to Dave DAX, my custom GPT model for creating DAX formulas. So Dave Dax, link is in the description, uh, is an expert in Power BI and DAX querying. It provides a well-explained SQL BI style solution. So if you're not familiar with SQL BI, uh, it's a group of people that have designed a way of formatting DAX query, which I really like because it's easier to read, easier to understand what is happening in a uh, query and I copy that and I'll ask him and I'll ask him can you help me creating a calendar table and we're off to the races now the thing I like about Dave Dax is it's not only just giving you the example like so but it's also explaining why it's interesting to have a Dax calendar uh, it tells you all the steps that you need to take and it helps you out um, creating the DAX in a nice format that's a very interesting one so I want to have the expanded calendar because it has more value so it has years month number month quarter day week uh, weekday um, that is the one that I like. And if you're not familiar with creating anything in DAX, uh, there's even a step-by-step -step table description on how to start. Open Power BI Desktop, go to the data view, create a new table using going to the modeling tab and selecting new table. So let's do that. Modeling tab, new table, and we have the table measure opening up or the table DAX opening up. This is now my calendar. And if I click on create, we now have our calendar DAX. It has a date value, which has the date hierarchy. It has months in there. It has month number in there, which is nice because now I can select the month and I can select sort by month number so that we have the months actually showing as January, February, March instead of being alphabetical, which is very nice. Uh, I can remove this one and I can use the date as a slicer for my project table. So let's do that right now. I'll, I'll add this to the box right here and I'll navigate to build a visual and I'll go to the classic slicer I'm not quite familiar with the new slicer yet so I'm not going to uh, do that right now we have the slicer setting and instead of doing a drop down let's change that value here to not a date hierarchy but a date specific and we're going to go back to the slicer and now we have the between option and I can say, okay, well, how about everything that happened in that time frame? I 
don't see it reflecting just yet. And that might be because there is no link between the two tables. So let's go to the relationship. And here we see that the date table wasn't linked up to the GPT table itself. Now let's go back. Now we see that the table down below is actually reflecting. That is good. Now, another thing that I would like to have Dave Dax do is calculate a number of projects based on the type of project we have. So let me take a look at the other prompts that I have. So here's a change um, of that date formula. Um, rather than having that um, calendar being a static value of two th 2020 and 23, I would like to have the dates uh, being dynamic. So let's so let's let's ask Dave if we can do that. So now we're asking Dave if rather than having a static date range, can we have a dynamic range two years in the past and six years into the future? Let's see what Dave has to say about that. I love it. So here we have a simple direct answer and we have a follow up, an extension of the dynamic calendar. So we can copy the code, go back to our report and navigate to calendar. I open up the calendar and I change the value to now rep represent a dynamic calendar. So it has a starting year from now and looking two years in the past and six years into the future. Very nice. So if I click on save now, I already see that there are some projects that are out of scope because 2020 is not part of 2021. Let's see if there's still a link between the values. Yes, there is a one too many relationship though. So let's apply the changes. And we can still have that going both ways. Uh, and as we can see, values are represented correctly. All right. So this is my follow up query, where I ask Dave, if I have two tables, one is a date table with a column called date, and one is a GPT table, which contains project day, start dates and type column. And I didn't ask specifically what I would like to do with these two tables. So I just mentioned that I have these two and it already tells me that I would like to add a relationship and I can add calculated columns and measures. Let's not look at this one just now, but let's have a look at the time since start. This is an interesting one. Uh, let's see how that pans out into our table. Um, I'll go to the GPT table and I'll add a measure. And here it says it can't find it because it might not be a measure that I need to create. It might be a column instead. So a new column, tax column. And now it does understand the relationship with a, a start date. Dave actually told us that, right? It, he said creating a calculated creating a calculated column. So it did tell us that we needed to have a column in there. Uh, so let's see what that looks like in our table. And it changed. Let's turn off that suggestion here because I don't like that just yet. And here we see that some of time start, let's uh, alter the name of this visual uh, since start It's much shorter. So now I know how many days since the start of this project. And I see that I still have 361 days until the Omega project is going to start great addition, something that I didn't plan for even uh, when I uh, was 
typing things in for Dave. So Dave also has this uh, really neat example um, or really neat explanation part in, in itself. So time intelligence functions are very interesting, of course. Um, totals year to date, uh, sample period last year. Let's have a look at the sample period last year. Um, Dave, can you create a measure that calculates the sample period last year based on total projects that have the type complex? And I'm asking that because I know that there is a complex type of project. And I want to see, compared to this year, how is the sample for the previous year or I want to see previous years in total. So what I can start doing while Dave is thinking, I can start adding the year values, you can change that to a column chart and see how that reflects on the year. So this is current year. So in 2021, we had seven projects and those seven projects are these projects. Um, now let's see what Dave came up with. So complex projects, sample period last year. So copy this. And of course, I can also click on the copy here. Uh, silly me. Um, let's go back to our table. Let's add a new measure. Here we have our date that we need to co correct because that's the dynamic calendar. And here we need to correct that it's actually complex. And we now have the measure. And we can add that measure to our visual. And we can see that there's one project in 2024 that's complex. There's one, two, three. One, two, three complex projects in 2023. There's one in 2020. And there's two in 2021. Awesome. So that measure also worked. So this is a rough example of what Dave Dax can do for you in accelerating your journey into writing Dax and writing Dax correctly. Um, it's not only the Dax formula that you're getting, it's the Dax formula as well as an explanation about the DAX formula and you get it nicely formatted like the guys at SQL BI actually do. Um, and I think it's a best practice. Um, you can try out Dave DAX now. Head on over to the link in the description or use the QR code that's on screen now. This is the last video of this year, 2023. And I want to wish everyone a happy new year and Christmas if you're celebrating that. And I hope to see you a lot of times in the next year, in next videos. Have a great one and see you next year.